Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another installment in our retrospective figure showcase series, where I take a chance to look at an older figure or unbox and set up a piece that I've probably had in storage for way too long. And today, we're stepping away from Marvel, Star Trek, Resident Evil, and we're going back into military with a really old Hot Toys release, almost 20 years at this point, uh, from back when they were actually releasing military figures. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at the US Army Special Forces Sniper in six scale format from Hot Toys. Now, in advance, I will tell you that I'm not sure if the kit is accurate, and they didn't provide an actual unit designation beyond noting that he is a Special Forces Sniper, so I can't comment on the accuracy here. So the kit may also be on the older side, which is something that we see with these uh, military figures from Hot Toys, especially when you consider that technology uh, and the kits themselves have continued to evolve over the last 20 years. And one of the things I noticed when unboxing these older releases is that usually they still look fantastic, but you can tell how far six scale has come in recent years. While the weapons all still look great, the level of detail that companies like Dan Toys and Easy and Simple, and even Soldier Story now, have achieved is beyond impressive. So just something to keep in mind as we look at this piece, because I'm gonna try to look at it through that perspective um, a little bit more, so that we're not necessarily completely judging this relative to more modern releases and, and judging it more as a, as a figure that was released for its given time. Now, I don't think there's any need for major introduction here, so let's jump right in and look at the package that Hot Toys was giving us back in the day. And while there are a lot of pieces and parts, it kind of pales in comparison to more modern figures. Not sure if that's a reflection of the approach Hot Toys was taking at the time with this line, or what I think is more likely the case is that modern kits just have more components to them, requiring more assembly. But like I said, you do get a nice amount of items. First, you get the sniper rifle and the secondary rifle, along with a sidearm. You also get two different knives in their own sheet, radio equipment, utility harness with some secondary pouches that have to be added on, uh, some alternate headgear, a bunch of accessories like zip ties, uh, sunglasses, and what really stands out here too though is that massive pack. It is really impressive from a size point of view and definitely something that immediately feels like it'll set the figure apart. And interestingly enough, you do get some bare feet, although I'm not sure why they're doing that um, or why they were doing that at the time. Not something we'll look at in depth since I don't really plan on using them, but <clears throat> for the overall package, it's a pretty nice setup. And again, surprisingly, just not as many components to assemble or kit up, which could actually be a good thing. So let's jump into the figure and I'll go weapons first and then kit after. So first up is a sniper rifle. Now again, I have to comment on age because these look good, but they're not as good as what we're seeing today. But one, they still hold up, and two, they still look good equipped on the figure. So first thing here, it's a longer barreled rifle, which makes sense. And there is a lot of nice detail work, including an HK stamp on the magwell. And I do like the clear magazine showing the rounds inside. At the front, you get <clears throat> a bipod stand that actually has metal springs that function. So if you flick them down, they set into position by themselves. Another highlight is the scope, which is high powered and has um, functioning flip up covers on both ends. And of course you do get a stock that does function and extends in and out. Paint ups on this one look really nice overall, and I, I think it is probably the mo more impressive the, of the two weapons. Next up, you get the M4 uh, set up with a grenade launcher under the main barrel, and a laser or target designator mounted on the side. Now, there's great detail work here too, where you can see the cables, the rivets, buttons, everything. Paint app is definitely older school though, with a lot of dry brushing to create that more used and weathered look. Grenade launcher does move and opens forward, while the rifle stock does expand out as well. Definitely feels more compact than the sniper rifle, but it is a stocky piece with the attachments. But also, if you look carefully, there's nice stamping on the rifle's magwell, similar to the sniper rifle, and on the aim point um, scope. So definitely a nice piece overall as well. Now, next weapon, you get the sidearm, which doesn't have as much detail as what we see on the rifles, but it still does look really nice, having a nice matte black finish with a textured grip. You do also get a spare mag and these two additional accessories, which are actually kind of cool. First one is a light attachment that you can actually attach at the bottom rail of the gun. The second is this grayish green molded piece, which is actually a piece that clips onto the figure's uh, drop down holster that holds the spare clip. So all together, really nice pieces. And as an added bonus, you can mount both the sight and the clip holder um, onto the holster. Now, we'll start grouping things together after this, uh, just for expediency. And, and the next one is gonna be honestly the bane of my existence. 
So this is the recon vest uh, or chest rig that's going to hold the various pouches. So you get four different pouches for the vest, including two that are meant to hold M4 magazines. Now you'll notice more modern figures will actually include extra magazines to stuff in there. But for this one, Hatsu has just provided some styrofoam inserts. Then you get a utility pouch and a canteen pouch. Now I'll tell you right now, I cheated a little bit when putting this together and I used tack after getting super annoyed with just trying to, to set everything up. The way the pouches connect to the vest is with these little straps behind them that you're supposed to thread in and out of the straps on the vest piece to get everything to kind of get um, threaded together. Um, now, the more modern, easy and simple figures, that fits in nicely. And while a little tedious, it just takes time. Here, the biggest issue is the straps are oversized. So it's a nightmare to try to thread these through in and out of the chest rig because the chest rig slots are too small so i'll try again at some point but for now like i said i, I use tack to just get them set up and, and you also get this drop down light pouch again all the pieces look great with amazing detail work but it's just really really annoying to set up now next set of items are parts of the uniform with the first being these knee pads that come with nice camo plating and actually have clips on the side to allow you to unhook and rehook the strap so really easy to place on the figure then you get a ski cap in gray, which is a little yellowed, and I think that's just due to being stuck in the box forever. And you get the hat too that comes in that matching camo pattern. So nice pieces again. And next up you get um, two radio pieces. The main one is a set that's connected to a headset, and I think it's an intercom piece. Honestly, I haven't seen this before, so I'm not sure what the components actually are, but it is an older setup. Radio looks good though, with some nice detailing on the face with the buttons and the screen. And the second radio, I think is an ISR for close communications, but I'm not sure. Still looks really nice with the detail work throughout. Now this does get connected to the figures kit with tape. And so overall, it's an interesting and realistic look. Uh, so last bunch of accessories are just a slew of smaller pieces. And look, for their age, they still look good right that's kind of the running theme right now so first up you get a wash that's actually not rubber but a nicer plastic you get a set of oakley sunglasses though they do seem a little bulkier than some more modern day pieces um, and you get a set of zip tie restraints uh, that are meant to hook onto the uh, carabin <coughs> sorry onto the the clip that in turn hooks up to one of the belts on the figure. So you, you just have to put all these on, on, on the piece, right? You get a small night light that connects to the vest and then you get two sets of knives that come with their own sheets that hook onto various parts of the kit. And then you get that piece at the top, which I think is supposed to be the connection to a hydration pack. So lots of pieces, but again, not as many as you get with the current set of six scale military releases. And final piece, which is actually really impressive is the tactical pack, which is huge. It adds a ton of depth to the figure and really looks like a setup for a long patrol and it's again um kind of uh they use this matching digital camo pattern with all sorts of clips and snaps and then if you flip it around you have that huge pocket in the back which is supposed to hold a sniper rifle and that also includes all sorts of straps and then the shoulder and waist and chest clips along with some have some mesh padding on them as well that looks really nice it's it's an overall impressive accessory for six scale and even though i complain that sometimes things don't fit super well with the connections you have to admit they look really nice and you can tell that a lot of work went into these now let's take a quick look at the sculpt and like with some of the other hot toys military releases this is clearly dated looking much more plastic instead of real they did a decent job with the buzz cut and the facial hair but if you look at the skin tone and the eyes the eyes lack the realism we get nowadays just with the pain app it, it's it was good for its time, but doesn't hold up anymore. And the skin tone is super shiny, lacking that modern uh, paintwork. So it looks okay, but definitely, like I said, feels dated. Again, what helps here with these releases is that I'm planning on using the hat and the sunglasses. So that'll serve to hide away some of these imperfections. As for the full figure, he comes straight out of the box with the more modern digital camo uniform, as well as a bulletproof vest pre-attached. You also get a nice secondary belt on him already that's currently hooked over the vest. So all overall looks pretty good. I do also like that the hands on the, these are sculpted with a nice brown um, tactical glove that has all the details showing some kind of plate protection over the back of the hand and the knuckles, as well as the drop down leg holster that has two rails attached to it to hold the pistol's light attachment as well as a spare clip holder. So that's a nice, set, nice setup right there. And I do really like the boots here because they're fully molded, but they look great. And they have that distinctive Oakley symbol on the side, looking like the older um, tactical boots that they released. So really nice detailed piece of kit here. <coughs> Excuse me. But of course, this doesn't, this doesn't look as good without the full kit setup. And once you load him up with the vest, the backpack, all the pouches, the knee pads, he looks awesome. 
I do have to tweak the backpack a little bit at the chest strap just to have it fit more tightly on the figure, but from a profile view, he looks fully loaded and I love that everything matches with the camo pattern. So again, everything just fits in nicely together. Also, I do like that the US flag patches are also that muted green to match the, the, the uniform. Just a well put together and thought out kit. The hat also looks nice, although it was a little tough to get onto the sculpt, but once it's on, it definitely looks good. And the radio works nicely as well, although there really isn't a specific pouch to hold this in place. So I got creative and slipped the radio into the utility pouch on the chest rig. And once you add in the weapons, he comes to life. Sniper rifle is a real standout with all the detail work. Only thing missing here is a suppressor, but still looks great with the scope being super detailed and looking great once you flip the protective covers off. Posability is also really good with the double jointed elbows. Although I do have to say, I feel like the body is also something that's evolved. The one that they selected here was pretty good for its time, but it's, it's a little dated nowadays and it doesn't pose as well as what you get. Um, what you got with easy and simple for example and damn toys um but again i'm judging i, I don't want to judge based on more modern figures i want to judge based on on these pieces now with the m4 equipped i like the look as well since he looks pretty imposing but again just feels a little dated with the missing suppressors but it does look intimidating especially with the grenade launcher and having the sniper rifle in the pack also makes for a nice setup with the kit and of course you can also equip the pistol and that looks great too with the m4 dropped in front uh, and the sniper rifle on the back. It just lends itself to a lot of variable poses. Again, at this point, maybe I'm sounding like a broken record, but when you see these kinds of figures fully kit up, you have to admit that it just looks impressive. From an accessory perspective, they just come with so much. And from a tailoring and clothing look, the fact that you can get so much detail in six scale is really impressive. And again, the fact that this figure is definitely older, closing in on 20 years and still looks good is a great testament to Hot Toys and this type of release. But I did also want to pose him with one of my top figures of last year, which was the easy and simple Air Force controller. And while both figures look amazing, you can tell that in 20 years, these type of figures have come a long way. Sure, the equipment has evolved, but even the rifle just has so much more detail work to it. And the cut and fit of the uniform has just improved significantly. Not a knock on this Hot Toys release, but more of an opportunity to let you know how things have evolved. But overall, super happy with the release and another nice addition to the military side of the collection that will hopefully continue to grow. So that was a quick look at the U.S. Army Special Forces Sniper by Hot Toys. Let me know your thoughts, and as always, thanks for watching, and if you are enjoying the content, please consider dropping a like, commenting, or subscribing, and we'll touch base on the next video.